It's my honor to spend some time today in conversation with Secretary Dan Glickman talking about how the food industry can come back stronger after the crisis of COVID-19. So before we really get into the specifics of how this sector can recover from the novel coronavirus, can you spend a few minutes talking about the top issues that COVID-19 has revealed relating to food? The bottom line is, of course, we have a, a safe and for the most part, reliable food supply in this country. The farm to table system works. But what this COVID has exposed is, is there are certain places in the food supply that are vulnerable to like shutdowns or vulnerable to what I call crisis points, uh, critical control points. And one of them is of course processing in fruits and vegetables, but particularly in the meat industry. So when a problem hits one place in that processing operation, it slows the whole thing down. And that is what is causing the problem right now. When we say there's a problem, um, how, how big is the problem? How is it affecting the end consumer at this point? And how is it being dealt with? The big impact is on the poor because we have a program, SNAP Food Stamps, that provides people the opportunity to go out and buy food at grocery stores. But we have this huge quantity of increased poverty by former middle class people who just have lost their income and don't have any money to spend on food. And that's why you see these huge food lines at food banks. And then they are not often able to get the quantity of food uh, because of the processing problems I just talked about. So it's caused some shortages in those food lines at food banks. You know, you, you were in government and, and saw firsthand what government did. You actually made a lot of positive changes um, in the supply chain. How is it working now and how much should government step in or how much should it be the responsibility of the private sector? Well, it's largely a private sector issue because we have a free market economy in this country. But when it comes to public health and safety, that's when the government has a big role in terms of making sure that uh, workers in this industry are treated safely and if, they're, they're, if they have a disease, then they're protected if they can't work. The government can also help purchase food in surplus and supply them to poor and hungry people, which the government is doing. And um, you know, the government is helpful in managing the entire problem, at least with respect to collection of data and showing areas of the country where problems are greater. But largely it is still an industry and private sector uh, responsibility. So you've spoken about um, the larger industrial processing plants and how that really impacts the supply chain downstream. What could be done to get the food from the farm directly to the people who need it, especially because people are not going to restaurants, um, they're, they're not going to institutional food purveyors as much, and some are even afraid to walk into their local supermarket? That is a great question. Uh, it is true that there is some food being dumped, some animals being euthanized because they can't get through the processing system because it's being bottled up by health and safety problems in some of these big plants. And then the second part of the problem is half the food which used to go into the restaurant industry, the hospital, food supply, hotel, schools, they're not buying anything anymore because they're basically closed up shop. So that slowed down the production side of the picture. A lot of that food that farmers and ranchers would produce would go into those markets. So the trick is to find ways to get that surplus food to the hungry, to the poor. I suspect that uh, you're gonna see more innovative ways to get food through this system uh, and not have the bottleneck of these big processing plants when they have problems. But we're probably not gonna see a revolutionary change in the food system in America. It still works pretty well. And do you believe that this innovation will become the norm as we start to open up and come out of this, or at least the first wave of it? Uh, th this is an industry that while it works on a very low margin of profit, is still quite innovative. And I suspect that they, they will find ways to get through this practice. Now, it may be that we have to slow down the production lines a little bit in these big industrial processing plants to ensure the health and safety of workers, which may not be, have been the highest priority in the last 20 
for 30 years. But in the meantime, even with that, I think we'll still be able to get uh, high quality, nutritious food to American consumers. It's, it's one of the great strengths of the American economy. So as we um, come out of this first wave of COVID-19 and, and states and countries are starting to open up, who are the winners and losers in this? How, how will it play out as an industry? Well, agriculture is highly leveraged. So smaller farmers are often the ones that are hurt the most because they, don't, they just don't have the capital to adjust to the changes that are needed. You know, the average dairy farm 50 years ago was 40 cows. Today, there are dairies in uh, California that have 10 or 15,000 cows. <laughs> and you're seeing that in, in all aspects of agriculture. But there is still a market for what I call uh, direct farm to consumer uh, commerce. And I suspect that innovative farmers using modern technology will be able to take advantage of that. And you're gonna see a whole new era of companies that are gonna to try to focus on that particular part of the marketplace. What do you think companies, farmers should be doing now to prepare for coming back? Well, I think farmers need to look at more direct marketing to consumers. And that's, that's easier when you're uh, growing apples or uh, stone fruit or vegetables than it is if you're growing wheat or corn or soybeans. But, but it's also true with animal agriculture that uh, I think you're gonna see new and innovative ways to get that product into the marketplace. I think for processors, the, we, we, our food supply is very safe, but I don't think that workers have had the focus, public health issues haven't had the focus in, in the food supply chain that at least I think we need to see in the future to fight this kind of pandemic. So I think the good companies are really gonna focus a lot more on better treatment and better pay for their employees. These are really important jobs. And you know, the one thing this whole pandemic has shown us is that there are an awful lot of essential people out there in this country that don't make very much money at all. And so I think you're gonna see a lot more interest in the health and safety of people who work in the food industry, processing, and grocery industry. And final thing is technology. There is so much technology that could help the food industry. There's so many opportunities for people in the tech world to partner with people in food. So I, I think there's great promise in the future of the food industry. We'll get through this crisis that we're in right now. It's tough, but we're pretty innovative people in this country. And I think we'll, we'll be able to meet most of those challenges. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for ending um, on a high note of hope uh, for us and for our listeners. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Elliot.